I was just talking about how this is like the, the tiebreaker. This is first one went to Parlay, second one went to Delos. How competitive is Brian? Is he competitive? Alright. Three. Because we kind of want to win. Two. I want to give this everything we can right now. One. Town too. Did you like the town? Yeah. It was great. It was a really, really nice last stop, I feel like. Now it's just us. Stuff. It is another gorgeous day. Look at this view as I walk out of the companionway. This is what you see. Wow. It's pretty nice, huh? It's yeah. amazing. Mountain. The mountain's the not too bad either. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Our weather is shaping up to head to the Tomotos. It's about a three-day sail, uh, 450 miles straight line, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, the other interesting thing is that Parlay is over there with Colin. Where are they at? Right there. And eight crew. And his gaggle of eight crew on board. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. And we've decided to uh, have a go at it. We're going to leave at the same time. We're going to the same place. I think the boats are fairly well matched. And so this is the, uh, the long awaited. We're doing this race, Brian? All right. Colin got the first one. It's a good match, dude, but you got me. Good rice, man. We nabbed the second one. And since then, we've received a flurry of messages. Which leaves us with no choice. I was just talking about how this is like the, the tiebreaker. This is first one went to Parlay, second one went to Delos. Tiebreaker in the Pacific. It's gonna be a challenging one too. Yeah, gonna be hard on it towards the end, I think. Second half. But we're gonna have some wind. Yeah. 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 Right so on. we're gonna go um, almost due south for a bit. I won't tell you our tactics. Okay. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> so our strategy for this um, race, we're gonna sail almost directly due south. And that is to set us up to be beam on when the winds hit 20 knots. So we do not want to be sailing into a 20 knot wind, but if it's on the beam, we'll be going extremely fast. And put extra pressure on this, making it a race, because we kind of want to win. <laughs> so it means we want to be going fast. Uh, how you feeling? 
Yeah, I'm not a very competitive person, so I think it's hilarious. <laughs> like, there are eight people on like a camera with two people and the toddler on the monohull. But that boat is built for that. It's a 53 foot am amal. It's a proper blue water boat, so this is nothing that they can't handle. For us, as a production catamaran, it's going to be a little bit more uncomfortable. <laughs> so we've sailed Delos all around the world, and the average speed for that whole trip has been just over six knots, which is pretty crazy when you consider that an average passenger jet flies 75 times faster. What that means is that every 15 minutes in the air is equal to 24 hours of us down here on the ocean sailing. That's why they say nothing goes upwind like a jet airplane, especially when you can't wait to see your family. Which is why we're totally happy to say that today's video is sponsored by Sterling Pacific. Sterling Pacific manufactures ultra premium aluminum luggage for frequent flyers and airline crew. The travel cases are entirely crafted of 5052 aluminum and reinforced with A380 on the corners with impact bearing ridges on the front and back for extra strength. The Italian leather handles make this travel case really stand out and the engineering and attention to detail is tailored for professional travelers. The two oversized wheels make it easier to pull on uneven surfaces and some parts that would normally be made of plastic are 100% crafted from sturdy and beautiful aluminum. So if you are a frequent traveler looking for a premium aluminum travel case, please visit sterlingpacific.com forward slash svdelos, link in the description below. If you do right now, please be sure to enter the code svdelos at checkout where you can get $300 off. So grab yourself an awesome piece of luggage and support our project at the very same time. Thanks very much. We don't even have anything on the line. What's, what's, what's the prize? Just bragging rights. <laughs> Go ahead, Dallas. Yeah, you guys ready to get underway? Yeah, we're just about to pick up the anchor. Did you get my uh, last message? Yeah, we're thinking maybe uh, loser host dinner. <laughs> Perfect. It's on. All right, best of luck, you guys. Fair wins. Yeah, man. Yeah, the finish line. And that finish line would be a three day, 460 nautical mile sail. Course? south by southwest and it would be a proper test for both boats and crew so with routes planned and the stakes set we motored out to assume our starting positions and even though this was just for a laugh when it comes to sailing colin and i take it a little more seriously than we both like to admit are we just trying to find the horn do you have a, a horn handy yeah we got one stand by all right Three, two, one. Oh my God, what is that? We didn't get the vision, call it does this. Oh man! <laughs> it's alright. Three day race, we got plenty of time. I think we've screwed up. We came a little bit too close to the island and we've lost all our wind. We had this amazing lead on them. Now they're just gonna come straight up. Probably overtake us actually. But we were a bit preoccupied once again. Okay, we got a fish. It's a big one. I'm gonna try and do it without slowing the boat down. Okay. Not 
Wait, murder. so what are the two scenarios? You, you murder for half an hour, then you add half an hour no. at the end, but well, we, we can murder at like eight knots, or we bob around for half an hour. Motor. It's probably better to motor for half an hour. It wasn't a tuna, huh? No. No. It was a barracuda. Yeah. Yeah. They have quite a lot of Cinquaterra here, and barracuda uh, feed a lot on like reef fish, so it's not safe. And that one is huge, so. Big tuna. Yeah, we want a big tuna. Survey says let's motor, so. Okay. Trying both engines. Your engine, am I hearing this right? <laughs> yes, and then we are it's gonna be getting handled yeah. off. Okay, that sounds good for us. He's putting up the kite. Putting up the kite? Oh yeah. That, we don't have a kite. He has put on his engine at 4 o'clock. But things on our side weren't looking particularly good either. There's not a lot of wind back here. We have like 9 knots, 8 knots. Yeah. Over on Parlay, however. Okay, our engines are off. Uh, we'll take a five minute penalty. I still think we did the right thing. We motored for five minutes and found, got out of that hole, back on track. So they're gonna go downwind. This is where we're gonna split, I guess. They'll be heading in that direction and we're gonna keep going beam on so that we're prepared for those high winds towards the end of the trip. As we thought, being a monohull and a bit more of a blue water boat, they might just plow straight into it. And that was precisely our plan. We would play to Delos' strengths, knowing she can cover some serious ground and stronger winds. Colin is currently three miles ahead of us. Oh! oh. It's all right, when the breeze comes up, that's when I'm counting on us to whoosh. Otherwise we have to cook dinner for eight people. Oh God, <laughs> no. The next morning, we were woken by yet another screeching room, but this one sounded a little different. I think it's pretty big. <laughs> it took a lot of line. It took so much effort to reel it in, our arms were burning and we needed to take turns. The fight went on and on, going well past the 30 minute mark. This thing was a beast. By the time we managed to get the fish in sight, it looked like it had just about died from exhaustion. So I desperately wanted to make sure I didn't lose it, otherwise the whole thing would go to waste. Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy shit! This is what we've been waiting for. Oh my god, it's such a huge fish. <laughs> it's a big tuna. Big tuna. So I looked in our little crusty book and it's a big eye tuna. About the same size as a yellowfin tuna. From a few pounds to more than 400 pounds. Dang. World record is 435 pounds. Wow. Food value, excellent. Game qualities among the strongest and most rugged fighters. Yeah. You know, it's just like a bullet. It literally fought itself to death though. Yeah. It was like wiped out when we got it out of the water. You wanna guess how many kilos it is we can bet? Uh, 15? I personally think it's gonna be more like 18 kilos. Really? Oh. <laughs> what does it say? 
Yeah, like between 13 and 14. Okay, wow. Ooh, well that took a little while, it took about an hour and a half. But look at this bowl of meat. Look at the color of that meat. It is gorgeous. Okay, so this is the GFS forecast. We're getting, yeah, 10 knots, 11 knots. And then as we progress, there's this band that kind of comes up and hits us right there. And that's what we're kind of waiting to see because you can also see the direction goes more uh, from easterly to a southeasterly direction, which means it's a shift of about, I think, about 30 degrees, maybe. Yeah, at least. Uh, which means we, do, we don't want it to be hard on it because that's also like more wind, right? Yeah. So if we're beating into that, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable. So we've been making easting a little bit further than the straight line course so that when we hit that, we can actually turn down a little bit. And you can see Colin, like, Right there. Boy, the monster. Me dead, I. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Holy. Oh. oh. Holy shit. With each of us having caught a feed, the only question that remained was who would do the cooking. <laughs> there's so much fish. I know. So we're gonna vacuum bag some of it so we can freeze it because there's no way that we can eat this. We're gonna maybe we can have a tuna party for the anchorage. Yeah. No. No? What are you doing down here? Are you getting ready for sushi? No, tuna. Tuna? We're gonna have big tuna sushi. Big tuna? <laughs> we just suck the ballooner because the wind is starting to get a little funky. It's getting a little squally. Yeah. We're hitting that front, I think. The wind direction changed too. The wind has definitely started switching a little bit more from the south. It's a little bit more bumpy. Seared sesame, big eye tuna fillets with oh, wasabi and soy. All right, Kaz, tell me if it's as good as we think it is. <laughs> oh my God. Is it good? Yeah. Oh, it's so good. That's a wasabi bite. Whoa. But as the night wore on, our contentment was short lived. What a challenging night. I don't think Brian slept anything. It's been just like squall after squall. Oh boy, it's been one of those nights that makes me wish that I actually wasn't out here sailing on the ocean. It's been a really tough night. We're beating into it. I see Dallas on the AIS are doing like sevens. Smashing straight into it. Just like these squalls keep on popping up and the wind just comes at you real hard, over 20 knots, it messes up your sailing angle, you're beating into it, you're getting bashed around, and then the squall goes by and it leaves no wind, and then you're sitting there bobbing around with the sails flapping. See how the sail's not real happy? It's a classic downfall of a multi-hull versus mono-hull. We just can't smash into it as well as they can. Every hour they're doing two miles more than us. And 
another one's hitting us now. It's so awful. Just the boat's just being thrashed around, dashing through the waves. I mean, the boat handles it well. It's not bad for the boat. It's just not any fun. I have to put my pride aside and my competitiveness aside and just go for a bit of comfort over uh, just pushing the boat to the absolute max. Yeah, much better. 18th sail change of the day. We'll see how that goes. By morning, the conditions hadn't improved much at all. If anything, they got a whole lot worse. Nasty. Up next on Delos, it's a race to the finish. So I put full main up, we got full sail, everything. That's because we're actually not that far behind. It was a really, really close race. Last 38 miles, let's go. Ah, uh, you can just start to see it right now. We navigate a minefield of bombies. Uh, we're in 25 meters of water. There's bombies all around us. You see the small one slightly to starboard? And we tread very cautiously as we work our way into the atoll. No wrecking. And answer the most important question. So who won? of engine hours, I just took a picture of it so we'll know uh, what's up at the end. You need to say, did I hear that correctly? <laughs> did I hear that correctly? Did you motor it? No, we just got our wind back. <laughs> <laughs> we're on course, we're on yep. target, we're making good, we're making good. <laughs> 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 